Well, at this point in the program, we now get into our lecture segment. And like I mentioned before, this morning we are starting a bit of a short series by the name of On the Road to Eid al Adha. Inclusive of today, we've got four Fridays left before the arrival of Eid al Adha. So from now until uh, that special occasion, from now until Eid al-Adha, every Friday we'll be highlighting the different aspects of Eid al-Adha, you know, highlighting some of the, you know, the information, the customs that surround Eid al-Adha, hopefully to, to paint a clearer picture as to what Eid al-Adha really means in the life of Muslims. So this morning, uh, on today's episode, I want to start off by giving you some information about the Islamic calendar. Because I think this information is very important and it will put into perspective uh, what uh, Eid al-Adha really means on the Islamic calendar. So, of course, the first question is, what is the Islamic calendar? Well, the Islamic calendar does not just hold sentimental value or sentimental significance uh, of measuring and recording dates, but it also plays a very important role in marking important religious events. The Islamic calendar is a lunar calendar. The structure of the Islamic calendar and how many months are in the Islamic calendar can be traced back to a verse of the Holy Quran in chapter 9, verse 36. Almighty Allah mentions that the number of months in the sight of Almighty Allah is 12 in the Islamic calendar. And that is something that, uh, like I mentioned before, runs on you know the lunar calculation. So at the end of every month, we look for the moon. At the end of the, on the 29th evening of every month, we look for the moon. If the moon is sighted, then that month it has come to an end, and then we move on to the next month. If the moon is not sighted, then that month completes 30 days. So in other words, a month in Islam can either have 29 or 30 days. So we have established that uh, the, uh, the year in Islam revolves around 12 months. According to the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, four of those months are considered to be sacred. The first month, the month of Muharram. The seventh month, the month of Rajab. The eleventh month, the month of Dhul Qa'da, that is the month that we are currently in right now. And the twelfth month, the month of Dhul Hijjah, which is next month. These four months, the first, seventh, eleventh, and twelfth, those four months are considered to be sacred months from amongst the twelve months of the year. What does it mean to be sacred? Well, that is a period where we have been encouraged to refrain from sin. We have been encouraged to refrain from disputes and arguments. And we have been encouraged to focus on piety, focus on prayer, charity, fasting, and spirituality. So the month that we are currently in, the month of uh, the Al-Qa'da, that is also one of the sacred months. But the month of the Hijjah, which of course is the month uh, that uh, Eid al-Adha takes place is also one of the sacred months. So in that month, it is very, a very, very spiritual period. It is a time where we try our very best to limit you know, the disobedience of Almighty Allah, to limit disputes and arguments, and focus more on prayer, on charity, on fasting, on, on spirituality, and so on and so forth. Also, it is important to, to understand that when did the Islamic calendar commence? Well, in the life of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, a significant event took place. And uh, this event is known as the Hijra. Hijra in the Arabic language means to migrate. So during the life of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he undertook a migration from the city of Mecca to the city of Medina. So the Islamic calendar starts from this particular occasion when the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, migrated from one city to the next. That is something which is very significant to remember. When we look at the Gregorian calendar, there are two acronyms that we normally tend to hear. BC and AD. 
What is the meaning of these acronyms? Well, first of all, BC means before the birth of Jesus. Before the birth of Jesus, peace be upon him. Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him. AD is a Latin term which means Anno Domini. And this means in the year of the Lord, and this is applied to the years following the birth of Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him. So BC, before the birth of Jesus, peace be upon him. AD, after the birth of uh, the prophet, peace be, uh, prophet Jesus, peace be upon him. So with that in mind, in the year 622 AD, in the year 622 AD, the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, migrated from Mecca to Medina, effectively commencing the Islamic calendar. So the acronym that is used or that is applied to those years, in the Islamic calendar is known as AH or after Hijri. Currently, we are in the year 1445 after Hijri, after the migration of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And that is how, in a nutshell, the structure of the Islamic calendar has been created. And now we are heading towards this beautiful month, the month of Dhul Hijjah. What is so important about this month? Why is this month so significant? What makes this month special? Well, like I mentioned before, first of all, it is one of the sacred months. It is one of the months in which we have been encouraged to focus more on spirituality and to steer away as much as possible from disobedience. Also, the month of the Hijjah, the last month on the Islamic calendar, the period of the first 10 days, it holds a place of special virtue and reverence and it is a period of, in, of intensified worship and magnified reward almighty allah swears by this period by the first 10 days of the last month on the islamic calendar if we go to chapter 89 verse 2 almighty allah mentions we swear by the dawn and the 10 nights the first 10 days and the first 10 nights a very holy period in one of the traditions of the prophet muhammad peace be upon him he mentions that on no days on no days is the worship of Almighty Allah desired more than in the first 10 days of the month of the Hijjah, the last month of the Islamic calendar. The fast for each of these days is equal to the fast of a whole year. The worship of each of these nights is equal to the reward of worshipping on Laylatul Qadr and so on and so forth. And there are so much more blessings and uh, uh, virtues of this particular night and of course it is the period of Hajj Hajj takes place on the 8th 9th 10th 11th and 12th of the month of the Hijjah also we look forward to the day of Eid there are two Eids in the Islamic calendar, one after the month of Ramadan, which is known as Eid al-Fitr, which is a celebration of the breaking of the fast. And the second one comes roughly about two and a half months after Eid al-Fitr. And that is, of course, known as Eid al-Adha. But when we look at the traditions of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, we can understand that Eid al-Adha has been described as the greater of the two Eids because of what it signifies and because of what it stands for. So two and a half months after Eid al-Fitr, we celebrate Eid al-Adha, which takes place on the 10th day of the month of the Hijjah, on the 10th day of the 12th month on the Islamic calendar. And that, of course, is a period which is coming up within under a month. You know, so it is important that we now put things in place to begin to welcome that very special period, not just the day of Eid, but of course the first 10 days of that month. Today is the 15th day of the month of the Qa'ada. We've got about 14 or 15 days left before the starting of that 10-day uh, period. Put measures in place to ensure that when that time dawns upon us, we're able to utilize the time given to us by the Almighty to gain a heightened level of spirituality and to become closer to Him and to use that time to become better individuals upon the face of the earth. So may Allah continue to guide us, may Allah make it easy upon us, and may He continue to bless us with health and strength that we're able to witness those holy days as we continue on with the journey of our lives.